This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Second, the taxi operator gunned down in Port Moore. The police in St. Catherine are probing the murder of another taxi operator who was shot and killed in Waterford in Portmore on Wednesday, just two hours before another cabbie was gunned down in Cumberland in the parish. The corporate communication unit confirmed the shooting but could not disclose the identity of the taxi operator killed in Waterford. Ejiton Newman, president of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, was outraged by the latest developments. That would make four taxi men shot and wounded in 14 days, two killed in one day in Portmore, one shot in a separate incident by a cop in Portmore. In all, three taxi men have been killed in eight days. Who will be next? Newman asked. On Wednesday, in the first murder of a taxi operator in Portmore, 43-year-old Mark Perry, a resident of Gilden Way, South Borough, St. Catherine, was shot dead by unknown assailants in Independence City. Reports are that Perry was at the intersection of Passage of Fort Drive and Independence City about 9.15 a.m. when armed men drove up on a motorcycle. The pillion rider got off the motorcycle and opened fire, hitting the deceased. He was pronounced dead at hospital. The men escaped in the area. Newman estimated that there have been 17 incidents of abductions, shootings and murders involving local taxi operators since the start of the year. There could be way more. No one is commenting on the deaths and abductions of these taxi operators. When something happens to a JUTC driver, there is a big hullabaloo about it. But when it happens to a local taxi man or bus driver, there is a big hush-hush. Is this a psychosocial problem that is causing this indifference to the plight of taxi operators? Newman asked. There is a growing list of murders that is of grave concern to the transport sector. On February 3, 2022, taxi operator 52-year-old Norman Sousap Francis was shot and killed on Riverside Drive in Havendale, St. Andrew. On March 4, 2022, taxi driver 29-year-old Arlando Patterson, who lived in Gregory Park in Portmore in the parish, was shot and killed on Walks Road in St. Catherine. The police report that explosions were heard in the vicinity of the Angels roundabout at about 9.20 p.m., and an alarm was raised. On March 11, 2022, a taxi operator was found shot to death on the Helsha Main Road in Portmore. He was later identified as a 48-year-old Christopher Ellis of Old Harbour Glades, St. Catherine. Ellis was found near his Toyota Pro Box about 8.30 p.m. In the first week of April, a taxi operator affiliated to the Traveler's Taxi Service was killed in Kingston. His identity has not been established. Lifting of pre-testing for travel ill-advised and reckless says Guy. The People's National Party has expressed a strong opposition to the government's removal of the COVID-19 pre-test requirement. The opposition said it would also not support the relaxation of the indoor mask wearing requirement, which the government does not intend to extend beyond its Friday, April 15 expiry dates. According to opposition spokesman on health and wellness, Dr. Maurice Guy, it is unwise for the government to adopt such a stance as there is a continued risk from the COVID-19 Omicron subvariant BA2, which persists in some jurisdictions from where Jamaica gets the majority of its visitors. Several countries are still facing an Omicron wave and removing the pretest requirement for entry into Jamaica is ill-advised and reckless, Dr. Guy said. He noted that there is an argument of cost for the pretest, but said Jamaica only requires the inexpensive antigen test to satisfy the protocol requirement. Therefore, the Member of Parliament said this claim should not be used to justify removing the pretest protocol for entering Jamaica. The latest move to end the pretest mandate for travelers and the mask wearing mandate in enclosed public spaces was announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in a statement on Wednesday. Dr. Guy, however, said the government should reconsider its current approach. He noted that with only 24% of the population vaccinated, the new policy would directly threaten seniors who are predisposed to complications from COVID-19 due to the high likelihood of comorbidities. Dr. Guy said instead of relaxing the requirements, 
The government should mandate that mask wearing be maintained and enforced for indoor spaces such as schools, businesses, places of worship and entertainment. He further reminded the government that the World Health Organization has maintained that the pandemic is not over and stressed that with the ever-increasing numbers of variants being discovered, mask wearing as a simple public health measure be maintained. Students at Clarendon School test positive for COVID. Seven students at a school in Clarendon tested positive for COVID-19 last week. This was disclosed by a medical officer of health for the parish, Dr. Kimberly Scarlett Campbell, during her report during today's monthly meeting at the Clarendon Municipal Corporation. We had a situation at a school last week where some of the children were coming down with a flu-like illness, so we had to go into the school and we tested 124 persons. Of that number, seven tested positive, as she informed. She said the school was closed and sanitized with inspectors going in to monitor what was happening. Campbell said a meeting was held with the private doctors in the parish where they were reminded to notify the health department if they are seeing an increase in the number of sick children. For those who tested positive at that particular school, nobody was admitted, everybody was treated. We had doctors on site to assess them and everything was okay, she said. Full face-to-face -face teaching resumed last month. 13-year-old charged for setting fire to retard a policeman's vehicles. A 13-year-old boy is now in police custody following allegations that he set fire to two vehicles owned by retired assistant commissioner of police Keith Trinity Gardner on Tuesday night. Investigators reported that shortly after midnight, the retired commander was alerted by neighbors that two of his vehicles parked at his Karachi Crescent residence was seen on fire. The vehicles, a grey 2007 Subaru motor vehicle and a grey and white Toyota Prado were badly damaged by the flames. Firefighters from the halfway tree fire station extinguished the flames. The estimated value for both vehicles was $4 million. The police conducted an operation in a nearby gully and the two boys aged 13 and 11 were arrested. Both boys were questioned by the police and the 13-year-old reportedly admitted to setting fire to the vehicles. He was subsequently charged with a malicious destruction of property. U.S. criticizes Jamaica's effort to enforce child labor laws. The U.S. State Department has criticized the Jamaican government's efforts to prevent child labor and exploitation. In its 2021 country report on human rights practices released on Wednesday, it said the government did not effectively enforce child labor laws. It noted that while the minimum age for general employment is 15, with a strict prohibition on employing children younger than 13, the government does not have a list of types of hazardous work prohibited for children. It said those who legally hire children are not required to keep any records and the government agencies did not inspect the informal sector. It noted that a youth activity survey revealed that 5.8% of children engaged in child labor and 4% of all children were engaged in hazardous work. The report also said that children were subjected to commercial sexual exploitation. It said while most penalties for child labor were criminal and in line with those for similar crimes, penalties for sex trafficking that allowed for a fine in lieu of imprisonment were not commensurate with similar crimes. The report also noted that violent criminal gangs used the children for forced begging as a lookout, armed gunmen as the couriers of drugs and weapons, and for lottery scams. Some Jamaican students who fled Ukraine still in limbo regarding studies. At least two Jamaican medical students who were studying in Ukraine remain in limbo as it relates to completion of their studies. Tarek Simpson and Jordan Shaw, who were studying in Kharkiv, were among more than 20 students who fled Ukraine last month following the Russian invasion. The government of Jamaica had said it would be making an effort to find alternative university places. However, the students say there is still no clear plan for them to continue their studies. Simpson, who is a final-year student, 
says Jamaicans in the United States have been trying to get them enrolled in universities there. In addition, the students are working separately to see if they can be accepted into schools in Europe. We're working with the diaspora members in the U.S. mainly, and they have been trying to help us to get us linked to different universities. They're, you know, working very hard. And we ourselves, as a group, we have been trying to figure out um, schools in Poland, well, European schools, for example, which would um, be able to accept us. Shaw, who is in the second year of her program, says the Ministry of Education is in contact with them, but there has been little progress. We have been in contact with the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. However, there hasn't been much movement as it will be us being accepted into different universities as yet. However, we are doing our own research. We're trying to get information on the different universities that are willing to accept us based on what it is that is happening. A lot of them aren't so willing to accept us without um, transcripts, but we are still remaining steadfast in our search. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.